Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. As we continue to look at the work of the Recovery and Renewal Task Force, some offices are beginning to open back up or are beginning to make plans for opening to employees. There's a lot of concern about how safe it really is to go back into such settings. Joining me to talk about office operations and what they might look like in coming months with COVID-19 as our backdrop are Tim Scales. He's with the American Underground. He's the Director of Growth. And we have Roz Dodd. She is the Senior Property Manager with the Research Triangle Foundation. Welcome and thank you both for joining me. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much. So Tim, for anybody who's been living under a rock for the last, um, say, 10 years, what is the American Underground? Let's explain that first. <laughs> sure. Uh, thanks so much for the opportunity to be here. It's great to, to meet everyone and share more about the AU. Uh, so yeah, the AU started about 10 years ago. We're celebrating our 10th birthday this uh, October. Uh, we're a startup hub and community of entrepreneurs, uh, home to about 150 startups at our four locations in downtown Durham. Uh, in addition to providing workspace, we connect entrepreneurs to each other through our engaged community and to the region's resources, thought leaders, talent, media, and entrepreneurial support systems. Okay. All right. And Roz, tell us what the Research Triangle Foundation is. Well, the Research Triangle Foundation, we actually manage Research Triangle Park, and it's 7,000 acres that houses hundreds of companies, including science and technology firms, government agencies, academic institutions, startups, and nonprofits. We help to create a thriving environment for the park, you know, which is the largest research park in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and we help promote economic development and facilitate, excuse me, facilitate teaching partnerships that benefit our region and our state. Mm -hmm. So needless to say, both of you have varying setups, office setups. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Tim, first, tell me about your workspace, your physical workspace, and are there open offices or um, sections or closed offices? Yeah, so there's, there's a bit of both. Uh, we have four locations in downtown. Three of those are entirely private office space for companies. Uh, our Main Street campus does have a shared co-working space and common areas, but about 95% of our members work out of private offices that are dedicated just to their companies. Okay, all right. Now, Ross, tell me about the physical setup in your buildings. Is it all traditional offices or are there open workspaces as well? Well, there's a little bit of both. You know, as a home for creative freelancers, you know, startups and STEM professionals and emerging companies, we have private offices as well as roughly about 20,000 uh, square footage of free co-working space and meetings and event space here. Lots of variety. Okay. So, Roz, I know your buildings are open now. And uh, has that been the case throughout the pandemic, or did you have to close them for a while? Actually, the buildings never closed. Uh, I think that the, the, the tenants themselves individually made decisions to bring their people home. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone that's a, light, that's a tenant here, we, they've always had access. They had the fobs to come in the doors. Now, the building doors did close for people that were just guests and visitors, but all mm -hmm. tenants had access anytime they wanted to come in. Um, okay. our lab, we do have lab spaces. The labs never stopped operating because they're lab. Um, mm -hmm. They couldn't do their work at home. But any other offices, they actually have been working from home most of the time and come in as they see fit with their fob. Mm -hmm. So I imagine there probably wasn't a lot of change, but I'll, I'll ask you about that later. Okay. And you guys never closed for COVID-19, right? Uh, how many businesses have continued to use your space during that time? Oh, you, you it has, uh, I'm sorry, so, uh, we saw everyone, uh, just about everyone scale back pretty immediately in March, uh, similar to, as Roz said, individual tenants made their decisions about, uh, who to send in. We had some folks, uh, deemed essential workers. And so we kept our building open for them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, the AU team worked from home that we did commit to having at least one staff member in the space a day to keep it clean and secure. Uh, shout out to Steve on our team for taking that responsibility for much of the time. Uh, as, as we moved into phase two, we opened up to all members. So again, we are restricting guests uh, and no group activities. We've seen a number of folks return to the space in June. It plateaued a little in July as the virus numbers increased, but in August, we're, uh, we're seeing a lot more growth there. But overall, it's balanced at a, a fairly good level of activity. We don't want it too busy. We want people to be able to maintain social distance, and we want them to have the opportunity to work safely and productively from their office if they choose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ross, how have your tenant businesses used your space in the past five months? 
Um, they've been, I gotta tell you, it's been very, very slow. Um, like I said, the lab spaces at Building 400 and around the corner on TW Alexander, they've been there every day, like a normal operation, but our regular tenants, they have been coming in slowly. Um, they've been staged in their employees just to keep the distancing. And um, the free open spaces that we have, they have been close to the public. So we have not had any events uh, in the building since March. Um, mm -hmm. And but we're doing everything virtually now. But we'll talk about that as we go down, <laughs> go down. Okay. The okay. But yeah, it's been very, it's been light, light, light loads. Mm -hmm. Okay, light loads. Tim, well, what steps in have you guys taken to make sure that your space is safe and complies with the state's and CDC's guidelines for office spaces? We uh, we've done a lot, and we've also that's been evolving over the past few months too, as we've learned more and the CDC's guidelines have evolved. Uh, we've listed everything on our website for our members and prospective tenants to see. Um, a few highlights of that are uh, early on, we wrote a uh, what we call the AU pledge and asked mm -hmm. members to read it and commit to it before coming back to the space. And it's just basic public health measures: wash your hands, maintain social distance, uh, wear a mask in common areas. Um, but we wanted our members to feel, because we're a shared co-working space and a shared community, to feel a shared responsibility to keeping everyone safe uh, and not coming in if you might be a risk to others. Uh, we've made physical changes, reducing density in conference rooms and common areas, uh, adding antimicrobial uh, coverings to elevator buttons and high touch surfaces, adding foot poles to doors uh, so you can navigate the space without using your hands if needed. Uh, mm -hmm. and lots of hand sanitizing, washing stations, and uh, restricting visitors and guests so our tenants can feel safe. Mm -hmm. So you made accommodations, but you also relied a lot on the um, tenants to do, to take responsibility for themselves, huh? Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's all about common sense and taking precautions uh, that are not just for you, but are for the community. And uh, we've been happy that our members have been thoughtful, not, a, not just about themselves, but also about keeping others in the community uh, safe and understanding people's different risk uh, tolerances. Mm -hmm. Ron, it's the same question for you. What have you all done to make sure that your space is safe and healthy? Okay, a lot of what Tim just mentioned before, touch free stations, disinfectant, you know, we've also additionally posted signage throughout the campus to promote washing your hands and waiting for your distance to be clear. We've upgraded our HVAC filtration system, the hospital grade. We're doing quarterly electrostatic disinfectant throughout all common areas in the building. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also installing the foot operated door handles in high traffic areas. And previously, you know, our co-working floor was on a first come first serve basis, but now we're implementing a co-working CRM so that people can check into the space and still, still gonna be free, but this will allow us to properly be able to notify people that's emergency down the road if possible. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, uh, Tim, I know that there are two, over 200 Durham-based businesses that have completed the health and safety checklist as part of the Back on the Bull campaign that's being done by the Recovery and Renewal Task Force. Uh, office operations is one of the industry-specific checklists available. As one of the businesses that has used this checklist, talk some more about the required steps that are unique to office operations. Sure, and yeah, I'd want to say the, the Back on the Bull campaign has been uh, remarkable. We had made a, a number of changes ourselves before this came out, but then our operations team went through that training uh, and folks from the city came and, and gave some assistance to us and we learned a lot more and were able to make some even uh, better changes to the space to keep it safe. Uh, a lot of it, it's, it's fairly straightforward and just ensuring that folks are sticking to um, the public health procedures, but it's to encourage telework and virtual meetings when possible, avoid gatherings, restrict access to communal spaces, uh, reduce touch points as much as possible, and as Ross said, post signage just to keep this top of mind for folks to encourage mm -hmm. hand washing and social distancing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ross, what do you see as some of the special considerations for office buildings that have to be kept in mind, uh, especially when reopening during this time? Um, well, um, in most of our high traffic areas, like the, the break rooms in the kitchen and stuff like that, we've eliminated high touch areas and materials like the single use uh, items in the kitchen areas, as opposed to just grabbing one from the open space. They're all individually wrapped. Um, we've removed half of those, the markers, dry erase markers for the conference rooms, and we're going to have to have those disinfected per usage. Um, and we think it's smart to take reopening back in stages so that you're not overwhelmed all at once. So currently we're allowing tenants only um, to make adjustments 
uh, to our plan before we reopen. So we're trying to know what the tenants are doing so we can try to make sure we're on the same page. We're keeping them mm. close of what we're doing. You know, uh, I think communication, because everyone's dealing with this so differently. It's a, it's a who knows what to do type of thing. It's one day at a time. So I think mm-hmm. working together in effective communication is going to help us all just being smart, you know, um, individually taking responsibility and us as an organization, making sure that our public spaces, they feel safe that we're doing our job. Uh-huh. Now, Tim, I know for you guys, you, your workspace was founded on the idea of fostering community, communication, and interaction with other start- startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, has the feel of AU changed, or do you see it changing as people and businesses come back in? It's certainly been a challenge. I mean, fostering community is so much easier when you're seeing people face to face. And so it's been a learning process for everyone. So back in March, we, we switched everything virtual as folks uh, started working from home. We uh, offered a lot of programs and social events and that kind of thing for folks to stay connected. And at first there was a lot of appetite for that. People were looking for connection and looking for uh, reassurance in a pretty uh, anxiety producing time. Mm-hmm. And then after working from home set in, Zoom fatigue set in, people really weren't looking for yet another uh, video conference uh, to end the day. And so we've been innovating uh, for our virtual community along the last few months as well. Uh, and just recently, we've, uh, we, in order to ensure that our members are connected, not just through video, but also forging real relationships that entrepreneurs uh, need to, to gain the resources they need for growth, we have started offering some very small in-person social distance events. We call them tiny happy hours. Uh, it's four to five people up on our rooftop outside, eight feet apart. We, we bring everyone a drink. Uh, and it's just an opportunity for uh, folks to actually connect person to person, which is, uh, is rare these days. And we found that people are really excited about that. They've been craving this connection. And uh, we can't hold the big events that we used to, but by, by curating these moments for people, we're able to bring them closer together again. Mm-hmm. So you're having a lot of those events, I imagine, then, just to make sure everybody gets the opportunity to engage. Because I, I would imagine, and like you said, it is exciting to be able to get out nowadays and see people. Yeah, it's, it's, we started small because we wanted to make sure that we could be safe. But now that we, we know that the rooftop is, is safe, outside transmission is low, uh, we're, we're scaling that up and letting anyone who is interested uh, uh, raise their hand and, and be invited to one of those activities. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, Ross, what are some of the challenges that you all have found in trying to keep your space as safe as possible? And is there anything you thought that would be difficult but really hasn't been? Hmm, challenges, let me tell you. Boy, do we have time for that? <laughs> no, I'll we'll be time. honest with you. Right. Everyone is approaching this in a way that they think is best for them. And, and since we understand that, we just want to make sure that we, make, we keep them safe. And I think that the rules that we've put in place, we're just following the government's mandated rules, right? And mm. if I'm that is to remain calm and confident with the rules we put in place, the tenants will respect that because we have some that are very, very cautious and some that are very laid back. So the key is safety for everyone. And we're just trying to make sure we accommodate them all with our prompt responsiveness being proactive as opposed to being reactive uh, they can respect that so it's been it's been not as bad as we thought it was just the unknown to everyone you know and once we got a grasp of what we can do and what we have to work with we've been we've been doing okay with it um, and in terms of what we thought would be difficult that hasn't been um, we have a very strong community at the frontier and, and we think that's special but we're worried about our programming and our placemaking would really suffer by not seeing people in person but we've mm-hmm. noticed great response Response to our programming virtually, so we've been we've been okay. It's just been a challenge and an adjustment to the new things that we happen to do. The new normal, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what you're both saying should be encouraging to a lot of businesses who are going through the same thing. Yeah. As you mentioned that your co-working space is currently closed. Now, what needs to happen for it to be able to reopen, and when do you see that potentially re- happening? Well, we don't know what it's going to open. It's a TBD thing, you know. Um, we're just waiting to see what the numbers are looking like and what the governor says. Um, we have quite a few inquiries about when are you going to open, when are you open, and they're excited, and we're excited about it as well. But safety is first and foremost. We just want to make sure that we have things in place here on site um, and the mindset of the people that are here are about practicing safety measures, you know. Um, we're taking it one step at a time. You know, we're not interested in reopening too quickly and then having to shut down again if cases are spiking and we're not prepared for it. So as much as our community means to us, it's also important that our staff feel safe and that the community, when they come back, they're feeling safe as well. So 
we're just gonna wait and see. We're just in a wait and see phase right now. We just don't, I, I wish we could announce a date, but we can't. Uh-huh, yeah. This is something new for our um, workers, you know? Yeah. We're used to either having or someone giving us the answers and the, the immediate answers and it's no. just not to be. But this question is both is for both of you. How do you think COVID-19 and the adjustments that office-based businesses have had to make will affect how businesses um, will use traditional office spaces in the future or, or whether it will affect it. So uh, Tim, let's start with you with that. Sure, yeah, I think uh, ultimately what I think we'll learn from this experience is that for many office-based companies, like the folks that work out of the AU, people, they really don't need to be in the office to get their job done, but they don't also want to permanently work from home or work remotely. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think our, our members and many other companies are going to be looking at hybrid uh, work from anywhere models where anywhere may include home, but it may include the office. Uh, and it just includes flexibility for what works for people and what allows them to get their jobs done. Um, I think this is going to have pretty major implications for what offices look like on the inside if they shift from uh, permanent workstations to flexible uh, gathering space and collaboration space. Uh, and I think that overall, that's also going to be uh, a net benefit for spaces like the AU and like the Frontier at RTP that uh, that already provide that and are a natural fit for people that are looking for that kind of approach to office space. Mm -hmm. So, Ross, what do you think? I think most of the people, we, we like the idea of working in a community. I mean, that gives about, you know, you can collaborate the energies. It's the, it's the collaborations of everything. And we all miss that a lot. We never thought we'd have going to the grocery store for the grocery store a week, you know, getting out of the house. Um, but, but we miss that. So I think that looking at office moving forward, it'll be definitely a different look. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the design of the inside of offices will be different. So the architects have a whole new thing to worry about now with designing offices. Uh, I think organizations are going to be thinking about social distancing as they think about their office. You still want to have that community and, and teamwork in the same space, but you're definitely going to have to be considering distancing and space and how does that look. And we still don't know what it looks like yet. You know, I think it's a work in progress. Uh, learning one day at a time on how to make this look good and what is it going to look like for us? Like, what is the normal going to be? Is it is it what it used to be like, or we're going to have to create what this new normal is for us in yeah. the office environment? Definitely. So this question is also for both of you, uh, Tim. What message do you have to share with other businesses uh, considering whether or not to go back into an office environment during this time? I would say uh, don't rush back listen to your employees and um, respect that everyone has a different uh, risk threshold for, for gathering in person. Uh, be thoughtful and intentional about how you approach that. Uh, I, per I personally think that it's vital for teams to have in-person time for, to build long-term relationships around collaboration and productivity. Uh, but I think you can be very intentional and thoughtful and safe about providing opportunities for that mm -hmm. now in the short term that are limited and uh, and also embrace the public health needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Ross, um, what do you think about um, the businesses uh, who are thinking about going back into the office space? I mean, what advice would you offer? I would just remind them to be mindful of the safety of their employees, you know, because everyone is viewing these things so differently. It's not a one size fits all in the way you have to think about this pandemic and how it affects you and your families. But I think that for, for companies, uh, when it's time to come back, I think being very, very flexible on flexibility for, for, for employees and just mm -hmm. making sure that your, your team is okay because your team is your operation, you know? And if your team is okay, uh, and they know they're going to be safe and their company is concerned, I think it's going to be an okay thing. Just continue to phase it back in in a way that works for you as a company. And uh -huh. I don't know what that looks like for every company. It's so different, you know, but definitely finding a way to reconnect safely with people in person is definitely going to be good for our mental space for everyone. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else either of you would like to add about uh, how businesses can safely reopen and what they need to think about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will add, it doesn't quite answer the question you asked, but I will add that uh, I've been really, we at the AU have been really happy and, uh, and uh, found really valuable the work that Durham as a city has done here. Uh, with the Back on the Bull campaign, uh, the Durham has you covered, Mask Marketplace, other efforts that the city has done. And 
it's a really thoughtful approach to reopening. It uh, takes a lot of stakeholders into account. It's working, which is uh, remarkable, and uh, it makes me proud to be a Dermite. Great. So thank you all. No, thank you. And Ross, one more chance. Um, wow. I think just keeping safety in mind, I think personal responsibility for your safety uh, uh -huh. of yourself and others, you know, I think just keeping that in mind, we are still growing here at the frontier. You know, we have box yard, we're still developing box yard. Um, we have frontier hub. Um, we have new things that are happening. So the energy is still here for growth, but we still have to be mindful of safety and what's happening We're in the middle of a pandemic. So we, we have to be realistic about that, but still look forward to better days and just keeping the right attitude. Great. Thank you both for joining me. Great advice for businesses. And um, you guys are certainly setting a great example as we move into the new normal. So thank you again. Well, that does it for City. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you. Uh, that does it for City Life. And uh, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to follow us on social media and on the Durham Television Network and on YouTube. And listen to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you again for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham. Uh -huh.